From the pages of MikeHuckabee.com, where you can read all my columns and hot takes on news of the day and even get them delivered right to your email inbox twice a day free of charge, it's time for another look back at the stories that made up the week that was. Well, as brave pro, uh, freedom protests continue in Cuba as well as here in America, some Americans are on the other side, bravely standing up for Cuba's communist dictators. For instance, the creator of the political propaganda disguised as history, the 1619 Project, proved that she really don't know much about history, to quote the great Sam Cooke, and she proved she don't know much about anything else when she praised the Cuban communists for allegedly solving the problem of racism. This is a head scratcher. Nicole Hannah-Jones said, and I quote, if you want to see the most equal multiracial demo, well, it's not a democracy, the most equal multiracial country in our hemisphere, it would be Cuba, end quote. Of course she's wrong, though kudos for actually recognizing that Cuba is not a democracy. Cuba's communist dictatorship, far from being colorblind, has actually taken more black political prisoners than apartheid-era South Africa and held them under worse conditions than Nelson Mandela faced. Meanwhile, the Marxist terrorist group known as Black Lives Matter curiously praised the Cuban government, but unsurprisingly blamed the United States for the Cuban people's suffering how do they do that? Well, because of the embargoes levied against Cuba. Black Lives Matter tweeted that Cuba is being punished by the U.S. government because the country has maintained its commitment to sovereignty and self-determination and that Cuba has been an ally with oppressed peoples of African descent and protected black revolutionaries like Asada Shakur. Now, Shakur, also known as Joanne Chesimard, was a convicted cop killer who escaped prison and fled to Cuba where Fidel Castro granted her asylum as a thumb in the eye to the U.S. But here's a news flash to BLM. The Cuban people aren't starving because the U.S. won't let them have food. They're starving because communist systems always lead to decay, starvation, and destruction of all that's good. Now, up until Thursday, the Biden administration just wasn't saying a whole lot of anything about this. Finally, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki responded to Fox News' Peter Ducey, about the only one who ever asked tough questions, with this. Peter, first I would say communism is a failed ideology, and we certainly believe that. It has failed the people of Cuba. They deserve freedom. They deserve a government that supports them, whether that is uh, making sure they have health and medical supplies, uh, access to vaccines, or whether they have economic opportunity and prosperity. And instead, this has been a government, an authoritarian communist regime that has repressed its people and has failed uh, the people of Cuba. It almost makes you wonder if one of President Trump's statements was accidentally printed out and slipped into her notes. And if you're not like BLM or Miss Nicole Hannah Jones and you want to know what's been going on in Cuba for a long time and how it all led up to this point, this uprising by the people against their communist oppressors, well, I would point out a must read article by Austin Bay, which I've linked to at MikeHuckabee.com. Let's get on to the Twitterverse. The Pan American Health uh, Organization, or PAHO, is taking a little bit of heat for fretting about the potential spread of COVID during protests in Cuba. The alleged news organization called Reuters happily amplified that message, which of course was in stark contrast to their coverage of the Black Lives Matter protest. Remember, protesting for leftist causes is perfectly fine. No health risk at all. It's only a super spreader event when they don't like the message. Reuters actually tweeted this, and I quote, Cuban protests risk exacerbating COVID-19 spike, end quote. Jessica O'Donnell from The Blaze responded, I think their government shooting them might be a bigger risk. Here was my own. Memo to Bernie AOC and the squad, remind us again how great socialism is. Maybe you can go to Cuba and convince those folks that they are actually living the dream. 
But the biggest shame on you of the week goes to Texas Democrats who fled the state in the private jet stocked with cases of Miller Lite to prevent a special session quorum and in doing so block passage of an election integrity bill. As usual, they claim without any evidence, get that, without evidence, that laws that ensure an honest election somehow suppress the votes of minorities and the disabled. Now to be clear, this is just a childish stunt that won't work in the long run. Governor Greg Abbott of Texas, who's had his fill of childish lawless Democrats lately, warned that there will be consequences, including arresting them the second they return to Texas and hauling them right back to Austin to do their jobs. I kind of think, however, it would be more appropriate and far funnier if they tried to return to Texas and they were blocked from entering by Border Patrol. Hmm, come to think of it, now's a good time to extend that wall all the way around Texas. And my two cents, if you don't want to do your job of representing your constituents, then resign immediately. And why are these people being treated as heroes by swampy DC Democrats? Aren't those the same Democrats who've been demanding an end to the Senate filibuster? Because anything that allows a minority to thwart the will of the majority is, quote, according to the Dems, an assault on democracy, end quote. Or does that only apply when they are in the majority? We all know the answer to that question. Finally, let's end with something positive, a shout out to a new gubernatorial candidate in the state of California, conservative radio host and commentator Larry Elder, who says he's running as a Republican to unseat smug Gavin Newsom in this fall's recall election, has some things to say. He says that Newsom, teachers unions, and other entrenched left-wing groups have wrecked the state. Elder told Fox News this week that 75% of black kids in California cannot read at state level proficiency. 50% of all kids in California in public schools cannot read at state level proficiency, yet the teachers union is the biggest contributor and they hate, hate, hate school choice. Now with Larry Elder throwing his hat into the ring, Californians will have another choice and it doesn't have to be a Democrat. Until next time, these have been the facts of the matter. Now, if you're seeing this, I know you've enjoyed that video. I mean, how could you not after all? So you know what you should do? Leave a like, click on the subscribe button below and hit the notification bell next to it so you'll always know when I have another video up for you to enjoy.